it would be really useful if one of the things that I covered on one of these videos is the process of quilting. So I've got my quilt top. I didn't make it actually, my brother did. Um, and it's a really nice quilt top. It's based on a K facet um, series of fabrics. And um, uh, my brother at the Cotton Patch, uh, he sells this as a kit. So I said I would quilt it for him, being the nicest that I am. So I want to quilt it. I've put it on this frame with an Avanti. It's a little foot frame, so it's got a small footprint, seven foot by seven foot, but it has the addition of the little buddy. Now the little buddy is a kit that enables you to make it more like one of the big frames. So the little buddy has an extra rail here with a hand rail, with a hand wheel, and then an extra rail at the front with a ratchet. And as a result, we can load the backing fabric onto a cloth leader then we lay on our wadding and our quilt top and we can use the clamps to hold the quilt top in place. But the first thing I need to do is get my quilt set up. So I've had a look at the glide threads and Pete and I had a look at which ones we gave for as a sort of audition by laying on the thread and just checking out whether it would work with the top and the backing fabric. So we've picked a sort of a purple here. This color is called in glide thread, it is lilac and I've teamed it up with a beautiful pale purple deco bob, which is my bobbin fill 80 weight polyester. I've cleaned out in my bobbin case area and I've given it, I am about to give it, a dot of oil. So that will keep my machine running nicely. That's the lovely thing about this handy quarters. They don't require a lot of maintenance. Every couple of years, we can arrange for your machine to be serviced, either in your own home or you can bring it to our unit and I put a dot of oil every bobbin change. That's it. I also clean it out. You get a brush. So we've done our maintenance and we've picked our thread. I've also got a quilt design that I've had a look at. I think for the scale of quilt that we've got, this will work really well. So the first thing I want to do is uh, I want to put in a reference line that I can line this quilt top up to so that it's nice and square to the quilt frame. The other thing I want to do, I want to change the foot. The foot is currently the standard foot and I want to put on the glide foot. So I'm just going to get my Allen key. See I'm replicating what you'd be doing, you'd be looking for the box. I know we've got it somewhere. We actually do, do supply you with a really nice little box to keep all your bits and bobs in when you get a handy quilter machine. And if you keep everything in there, you should have less problems trying to find where you've put everything. That's the idea anyway. And the box looks nice. Pete's idea, you can tell he had a daughter. Okay, so I've put on my glide foot too. And the reason that I've put this on is when we use a standard foot, which is like this, the little foot, can get caught when you go on and off the fabric. So we put the glide foot on and the idea is it literally glides over the seams. It glides over applique, it glides over prairie points, anything that we've got raised. So it's particularly good for pantographs. It's also good for computerized quilting. So I'm gonna put on one of these. This is a channel lock. We put it over the top of the wheels, it locks the wheels in place. So if I put it on and I stop the wheels going from front to back, I can now get this pretty close and then I'm going to put a seam line in. That looks good, it's running along the top of the quilt. Just edge it forward, lay it flat, edge it forward. I wasn't far off, which is more luck than judgment, of course. Right, now I'm ready to go. I'm gonna do a little wiggly line that will be within the seam allowance of my binding. So you won't see it. I'm gonna do it in regulated mode, in cruise, 3%, and I'm gonna do six stitches per inch. So I'll just bring that thread up, do some tie off stitches and we're ready to go.
Now I haven't actually done the tension test because these stitches are fine but they're not perfect yet. Now you might be asking yourselves, what's with the wiggly line? Well, if you get any fullness where the wiggles go on and off the quilt, it enables the fullness to go into those areas. And therefore we don't end up with a little fold. We don't want to really, we don't want little creases or folds or anything like that on our quilt if we can avoid it. So now we've done that, I'm gonna take it back over the other side. I'm gonna do some test stitching. So I've got an extra piece of fabric. This fabric is very similar to what I've got in the quilt. So it's some K-facet fabrics. It's the same backing and it's the same, sorry, it's the same type of backing and it's the same wadding. So it is a proper test. Increase the number of stitches per inch to 11. Just pull this up, pull up the bobbin thread. I have a little slope on our frame here. When we set your frame up, or when you set your frame up, it shouldn't be on a slope. So tension test, I'm looking to make sure that the bobbin thread is not coming through on the top and the top isn't coming through on the bottom and that is absolutely perfect. I mean, one of the things that you'll find is over time is as you pull the thread through, you'll actually be able to tell if that is okay and you can get pretty close. So now I'm going to put a reference line down from top to bottom of the throat space that I can quilt in and let's just pop that in there. Okay and just make sure that that is looking aligned from top to bottom. Again a long stitch in case I mess up. Just catching, just catching that seam at the edge of the quilt. That gives us a nice starting point from which to do our quilting. I'm all set. I am ready to go.